In the last few years, there have been so many different incredible discoveries when it comes to unusual stars, unusual planets, and other unique objects. But there's one type of an object that I always love talking about. The type of a cosmic object we just don't have in the solar system. A brown dwarf. An object that's not really a star, but that's not really a planet either. And in this video we're going to be discussing a new discovery of what seems to be the strangest brown dwarf system we've seen in the last few years. A binary system where a brown dwarf is orbiting along with the red dwarf, but more importantly, doing so super quickly. It only takes them approximately 50 minutes. So basically we're discussing the tightest binary we've seen in a very very long time. A star and a brown dwarf practically touching each other because of the proximity of their orbits. How wonderful person, this is Anton. So let's talk a little bit more about the system, what the scientists believe happened here, what they think will happen in the future, and why the system is kind of important. But I guess let's start with the obvious. Some objects, like neutron stars and black holes, can certainly create even tighter binaries. But these types of binaries do not stay around for a very long time. Because of the interaction of gravitational waves with these objects, they eventually come closer and closer together and collide, producing a massive gravitational wave that's visible from planet Earth. Which is why generally we don't find neutron stars or black holes in a relatively tight binary. They just don't exist for a very long time. We do, however, find white dwarfs. White dwarf binaries can exist much longer, and at least one has been discovered breaking many records. H.M. Cancrii is the fastest binary star ever discovered, with two white dwarfs orbiting one another at 400 km per second. And I think as of today, this is the shortest binary known to us. Here, a single orbit only takes approximately 5 minutes, with the distance between the white dwarfs being about 80,000 km, one-fourth of a distance of Earth to the Moon. But even in this case, this is not a permanent system, once again because of gravitational waves. In approximately 300,000 years, these white dwarfs are going to merge, most likely resulting in a Type 1a supernova, and also leaving nothing behind. But white dwarfs are obviously remnant stars. Stars no longer fusing hydrogen that essentially have reached the end of their lifetimes. But red dwarfs are a different story, as are more mysterious brown dwarfs. And discovering two of these objects in orbit super close to one another is a pretty big discovery. And so here we have this very unusual, very tight binary, approximately 450 light years away from planet Earth, where a single orbit takes approximately 1.9 hours, with these two objects orbiting at 98 km per second in a relatively permanent orbit that's going to stay this way for a very, very, very long time. And if we use the classical Newtonian calculations, the system is supposed to survive for at least 1.3 billion years, at which point one of the stars is going to start interacting with the other and they're going to start exchanging masses. But the reality here is a little bit different and might involve very powerful magnetic fields. Which may explain the origin of this binary and also explain what's going to happen to it in the next few millions of years. And so first of all, this is actually a really strange discovery. Scientists have never seen a red dwarf and a brown dwarf at such extremely short distances. Because brown dwarfs very likely form like typical stars, it's quite unlikely that we're going to find them super close to another star. And though many different brown dwarf binaries have been found in the past, including the famous Lomon 16 that you can learn more about in the video in the description, none of these objects orbit close enough to form a tight binary. And so discovering a brown dwarf that seems to be actually close enough to interact with a companion star can definitely help scientists measure a lot of different properties, and more importantly, solve the mystery of brown dwarf formation and possibly explain brown dwarf and red dwarf evolution. In other words, this is important to try to figure out how these stars evolve and what makes them the way they are. But in this case, this particular system has way too many things that make it super unusual. For example, it's kind of ancient, several billion years old. And so how exactly these two stars ended up in such a tight binary was not clear at first. On top of this, they're not very different in terms of mass. The red dwarf, even though it is technically a star, is only about 13% the mass of the Sun, roughly around 130 Jupiter masses. Now in comparison, this brown dwarf is approximately 
80 masses of Jupiter and possesses a lot more density, higher gravity on the surface and is practically a star itself. It's basically at that limit where it should be a star, it should already possess ability to burn hydrogen, but it's not doing so for one reason or another. Normally at this mass we do expect it to become a red dwarf. And so even though the red dwarf is a little bit more massive, it's the brown dwarf that actually seems to possess a little bit more, I guess, influence in this system. But it still doesn't explain how they got here. And so the recent study suggests that it's most likely these objects were probably much farther away, but possibly much larger as well. And the way they got into this very tight orbit is through this phenomenon that was discovered not so long ago, known as magnetic breaking. As the name suggests, it involves magnetic fields that seem to stop certain objects and slow down their motion one way or another. This has been discovered in other stars that have a very tight orbit, but in essence, as these stars emit a lot of particles through, for example, solar winds, many of these particles are captured by magnetic fields of their partner. And the interaction between these particles and the magnetic fields slows down the objects by just a little bit. But as you do this over millions of years, these interactions add up and the stars come closer and closer to one another. And so this particular phenomenon is now believed to play a very important role of evolution of many different binary systems, especially when stars are very magnetic or when they start relatively close to one another. And so based on the observations from this system, it actually turns out that magnetic breaking is a very efficient process, even in brown dwarfs. Because basically there's just no other explanation for how these stars ended up so close. And more importantly, it suggests that the orbit here is going to keep shrinking and at some point these objects are going to become close enough where one of them is going to start doing something to the other. And though the obvious assumption is that the star is going to destroy the brown dwarf, it seems to be quite the opposite. The mathematical analysis suggests that it's really the brown dwarf that's going to start stealing the mass from the star, making the star smaller over time and growing in size itself. Here the scientists think it might even become some kind of a supermassive brown dwarf, massive enough to technically become a star, but most likely remaining a brown dwarf because of a lot of other gravitational and magnetic interactions with its partner. With all this happening probably within the next 10 to maybe 20 million years. And at this point the brown dwarf is going to start growing larger, the red dwarf is going to shrink, and they might even create what's known as a contact binary. Essentially two star-like objects in direct physical contact with one another, almost forming a single object, but also sharing materials, forming an unusual hourglass-like object. Now this has been seen in larger giant stars, but it's never been seen in either a brown dwarf or a red dwarf. And so what exactly this becomes is of course a big mystery. But intriguingly enough, because of the discovery of this object, now the implication here is that these are probably very common, but we're not seeing them because they're just very, very dim, super difficult to see. And so there could be quite a few of these brown dwarf and brown dwarf red dwarf binaries in super close distance to one another, very likely already exchanging mass, possibly even forming contact objects, and also creating a lot of other effects we don't understand, with most of these effects and most of these phenomena basically being magnetic in nature. But it's still not clear exactly what this brown dwarf is going to become when it finally finishes evolution and what exactly remains of its partner, the red dwarf, once it finishes sucking up all of the materials from its surface. Now the star in this case might actually transition into something else, the brown dwarf might also become something different, but at the moment the authors don't really make any predictions and honestly nobody really knows. But once again, because of the discovery of this object, it sort of implies that this is probably a pretty common phenomenon and chances are there are many of these objects in the galaxy that have already gone through this phenomenon and through this process and have already become the final product. We just have to find them. And so if one day we discover some kind of a supermassive brown dwarf with some other unusual properties, it's probably going to be a connection to this particular story. But until the discovery or until something else is found here, at least for now that's pretty much it. An exciting discovery, an unusual discovery, and something that will hopefully teach us more about the evolution of stars and the evolution of brown dwarfs. But for now, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership 
or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.